In today's episode we will add two features to our current project that were requested in the comments. On the one hand we will start with the implementation of a currency system and on the other hand we will change the way we pick up items right now. Let's start with our currency. Go inside of your inventory widget and search for a text that we will drag onto our horizontal box. Call that our gold text. Make it a variable. Set it to fill and align right, vertically to the center. Change the font type to regular. Give it a size of 19 pixel maybe. And for the default text we could type in 9999, just to see how it will look. Then let's also change the color and opacity to a yellow-orange color. After that let's get the size box with a weight icon copy and paste it on our horizontal box. Then let's clear the padding for that and set the horizontal alignment to align right. Then let's get the image here and select the gold icon, not the weight icon. Compile and save and there was everything we had to do for inventory widget. Now let's open up our top down character. And in here we will need some new variables. First off our current gold, which will be an integer. And the next one will be the maximum gold, which is an integer as well. Compile and save. For the maximum gold we could set a default value of 9999. Then we will add a function called update gold. And we will get our inventory reference, get the inventory widget, off of the inventory widget get our gold text, then set the text, and for the in text let's get our current gold, convert that to text. Let's actually expand the conversion here and uncheck the use grouping, then plug in the return value for the in text. And after that we can return. Next function will be increase gold. It will have an input which will be an integer called amount. And we will get our current gold. Set that. And get our current gold. Search for plus. Integer plus integer. Connect that to the amount. And afterwards we want to clamp it from a minimum value of 0 to our maximum. Then plug in the return value for the set current gold. And after we set the variable, we also want to update our widget. That's it for the function, return afterwards. And we can right click on our increase gold function, duplicate that for decrease gold. Only thing we'll have to change is remove the plus and search for minus, integer minus integer. Then we can compile and save. Another thing we can do for debugging later on is go to the event graph and maybe when we hit F we will increase our gold by a value of 75 or something just so we can see later whether it works or not. Okay, compile and save. That's everything we have to do in the top-down character. Let's actually keep it open and minimize it. Go to our BP inventory and on the event graph, event begin play. After we update the health bar for our top-down char, we also want to update the gold. And now our basic currency system should already work. And when we hit play, hit F, you can see our gold text updating there. Currently there is nothing we can do with our gold, but in one of the next videos we will add a merchant to solve that problem. Alright, now let's change the way we can pick up items right now. First off, close the inventory and in our top down character we need a new variable. That will be nearby pickup actors. Make that an array of the type BP pickup actor references. So in that array we will store references to all of the pickup actors that are in pickup range for us at the moment. Compile, save it, then minimize it again. 
go to your widgets folder and we will create a new widget. That will be the pickup text. Open that up, kill the canvas, and let's start with the vertical box. First off, we will get a text, drag that on top of a vertical box. That will be the name text. Make it a variable and actually set it to desired on screen. For the default text you could type in something like health potion and in brackets 50. Decrease the font size a bit, 22 pixels should work. Double click on the shadow color and make it opaque. Maybe increase the shadow offset to 1.5 in X and Y. And make sure that the justification is set to align text center. Then we want to get another text, drag that on top of a vertical box. For the text here, type in press E to pick up. Let's give that a padding of 10 pixel to the top and to the bottom. Set it to horizontally aligned center and vertically aligned center. Then decrease the font size to 18 pixel maybe and choose light. Alright, compile save and we can close that. Now we have to make changes to our pickup class. So under blueprints, item classes, BP pickup actor, let's open that up. In the viewport we will add a new component here and that will be a widget component. Okay, you can call that pickup text. For the space here, choose screen so it won't receive lighting information and that way we don't have to rotate it later on. Let's move it up in Z to maybe to 120 centimeters. That worked fine for me. For the draw size, you could lower the Y value to 200 pixel maybe. And the widget class should be our pickup text that we created. Last thing we have to do is search for visible and uncheck the visible boolean here. So we won't see the text by default. Compile, save and hop over to the event graph. Let's create a new function called update text. And what that will do is get our pickup text. Then search for get user widget object. Cast that to our pickup text. And when the cast is successful, we can get our name text and set text. Connect that to the true path here. Right click and search for format text that we already did in some other videos. Connect the result to the in text and for the format let's type in curly brackets name. After that we can hit spacebar, usual brackets and then curly brackets again and type in amount. For the name we will get our item to add class get class defaults, break the item info, and connect the name. For the amount, simply get our amount and connect that. After we set the text, we want to return. And if our cast failed, we will also want to return. Also, when we begin play, which means when our pickup actor is created, we want to update the text. And we won't use set on component begin overlap for picking up the item anymore. So delete the event here and search for add custom event. Call that on picked up. Give it an input which will be a top down character reference called top down char. Then connect that to the object and connect the execution here. Also since it's a top down char reference we don't need the cast here anymore. So delete that. Connect the top down chart to the get inventory reference and connect the execution here. What we want to do is when our player is nearby, we want to show our pickup text. So for that, select our sphere collision and add an on component begin overlap event. Select it again, add an on component end overlap event. And another thing that is completely optional is to go to and modify the sphere radius just increase it to 160 maybe. Because that sphere radius basically defines the range in which we can pick up items so it might feel better for the player when you choose a higher number here. 
Okay, now for on component begin overlap. We will drag off of the other actor, cast that to our top down character. So only when our player overlaps this sphere we will do something. And then with our top down character we will get our nearby pickup actors, get the length of it, so the amount of items inside of it, and check whether that is greater than zero. Set to a branch. If there already are items inside of our nearby pickup actors array, we will drag off of the nearby pickup actors and search for add. And we will add our cells to the array. But if there is nothing inside of our actors, we want to get our pickup text and set visibility to true. So which means that we show our pickup text and after that you can copy over the add here, connect the nearby pickup actors array. That's it for our own component begin overlap. On component end overlap we also want to get the other actor, cast it to the top down char, then get the nearby pickup actors. Off of that we want to get at index 0, then search for is valid. Off of the return value we want to search for end boolean. We want to check whether the item at index 0 is equal to ourselves. Connect that to the end, then hold B, left click for branch, connect the end to the condition, and connect the branch to the cast. So when we end overlapping the pickup actor we will check whether that actor was the first one in the nearby pickup actors array. If that's not the case, we will drag off of the nearby pickup actors and remove item. And the item will be ourselves, since our player has left the radius of our sphere. However, if that pickup actor was the first one in the list of nearby pickup actors, we have to get our pickup text, set visibility to hidden this time. Then we also want to remove an item, again that will be ourselves, and after we remove that, let's actually get our nearby pickup actors once again, drag that over, then off of it get, at index 0, then search for is valid, and this time we will do the check here, not the boolean. So if we remove the item and still there is a valid one at index 0, we will get the one at index 0, get its pickup text and set visibility to true. Okay, that's it for our two events. We also have to change the on picked up event that we created. So let's move it over here. When we pick up an item we were successful but there is still some rest left and we change the amount. We also want to update the text. If not, let's first delete the destroy actor here. We will re-add that later. So if we were able to remove all of our items, we will get the top-down character from the input node and get the nearby pickup actors. So we, because we picked up everything we could, we will remove an item and that will be ourselves again. Connect that to the false path here. After that we want to get from our array index 0 and check whether it's valid. If it's not valid we will simply destroy ourselves. But if it is we want to get the pickup text at index 0 and set the visibility to visible before we destroy ourselves again. Compile and save. That was everything we had to do for our pickup actors. Let's quickly go back to the top down character and we have to set up the input event. Right click, search for key E and somewhere in the list here there should be the E key. Select that. Now when E is pressed we want to get our nearby pickup actors. Get from it at index 0, so the first element. Check whether that one is valid. And if it is valid, we want to call our on picked up. 
connect it to the is valid and for the top down shell reference we will get a reference to ourselves. Now compile and save and we should be ready to test. If we move close to our first pickup actor here, you can see there are 20 stones. I can hit E to pick them up. Here you can see 30 pieces of wood. And two hero swords. Here again. And the advantage of the way our system is set up now is that when we close the game and maybe move them closer to each other so that they overlap, we can go here. You can see our stones. But when we pick them up, text for our wood becomes visible instantly and we can press E to pick that one up. Alright, that's it for this video. See you in the next one.